I hope that that worked. Uh, recording pending. That's not a good thing. You are recording. Excellent. I am recording. Good. So that then gives me the opportunity to uh, welcome all of you to this uh, brown bag seminar that we have today. The speaker uh, uh, for today is Aishwarya Rai Munapi. Uh, I don't think I got that pronunciation right, Aishwarya, but I never practiced, so that's for me. That's new for me. Um, of course, I think you all know that this is part of the Software Center Brown Bag series. Um, the way that this will work is in a minute, I will give the floor to Aishwarya. She will present for around 25 minutes. Towards the end of the Brown Bag, we will have some time for questions. I will stop recording after she has uh, finished her presentation. And then after the Q&A, um, we will give Christian Sandal a minute to announce next week's Brown Bag Seminar, because that is when theme one, today we have theme five of Software Center, the AI engineering theme. Uh, next week, it will be the continuous uh, integration test and deployment theme that we'll be presenting. Uh, and I, Christian will end this Brown Bag Seminar by giving a quick heads up for what is happening next week. Aishwarya is a PhD student uh, in Software Center. She passed uh, or did her licentiate defense earlier this year, and she is now moving into um, working on um, uh, more of the use of AI solutions in data pipelines. So the title of her presentation is AI-powered fault tolerance in data pipelines. And with that, Aishwarya, I would like to give the floor to you. Good luck. Thank you. Is it working Sorry, to share? So Yes, so can you see my screen now? Yes, I can see your screen, so go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ian, for the introduction. So, as Ian told, my name is Aishwarya. Uh, I'm a PhD student from Chalmers University, and I work with this AI engineering theme, and particularly on data management or data and data management for uh, AI. So today I'll be talking about this AI powered fault tolerance in data pipelines. Uh, and this is an overview of my presentation. So I'll start by explaining what is data pipelines and what are the uses for that and why do we need a fault tolerant data pipelines, etc. And then we'll be talking about the objectives of our study and then um, a conceptual data pipeline model that we have already developed. Uh, and then uh, we'll be talking about typical faults and mitigation strategies that are required for automated data pipeline recovery. And then um, I'll be talking about an industrial uh, case where we implemented this automated data pipeline recovery and the results that we obtained and the limitation of this particular approach. Uh, and then uh, we'll be talking about uh, this AI powered fault tolerance in data pipelines and we'll move on to the conclusion and the future work. Okay, so uh, to set some context, data pipelines are nothing but complex chain of interconnected activities that starts with the data sink, sorry, starts with the data source and ends in a data sink. And it automates uh, the first step of data generation to uh, the last step of data reception and thereby reducing the human intervention. So we are not, uh, completely able to develop an automated or completely automated data pipelines until today. So uh, yeah, that is what we are targeting for in our future research. So why do we need this automated data pipeline recovery? Because as I already told, these data pipelines are nothing but interconnected activities. So is fault in a single step of data pipeline will have cascading effects. And this leads to significant performance degradation in data intensive systems. Therefore, we require continuous monitoring and fault detection mechanism be implemented in this data pipelines. 
And these are the objectives of our study. First one is to explore the need for incorporating automated fault detection mechanisms and the corresponding mitigation strategies at different stages of the data pipeline. And the second objective is to identify the typical faults at different stages of the data pipeline and possible mitigation strategies that can be adopted by reducing the impact of um, uh, by reducing the impact on data pipelines. And the third objective is to maximize automation data pipelines by implementing data pipeline recovery. So for that, so I was been talking about this data pipeline for a long time. So you might be wondering what kind of architecture, what kind of data pipeline model that we uh, are using right now in our research. So this is our conceptual data pipeline model where you can see different activities or nodes, um, different activities that are marked by nodes. Nodes are nothing but the gray boxes that you see over there. Uh, data generation, data collection, raw data storage, data ingestion, data processing, refined data storage, and data application of the different nodes in this particular conceptual data pipeline model that, are, that is shown in this picture. And there are um, connectors in between these nodes so the data flows from one node to another node through these connectors and we have something called um, like node level capabilities as well as connector level capabilities node level capabilities are nothing but data generation data collection data storage data ingestion etc and um, connector level capabilities are sending alarms authentication validation fault detection and mitigation so here, if I explain this conceptual data pipeline model, data generation takes place at data sources and I have illustrated some of the data sources like a base station, a car, a camera or a mobile device. And there can be many more data sources, but yeah, I have shown a few over here. And then once the data is generated, a data collection agent will collect the data from these data sources. At that time, this data collection agent should be authenticated to collect the data from the data source. That is why we have a small green box called marked as A, you know, which is for authenticating this data collection agent. And uh, the data that is collected will be stored in a raw data storage from where it is ingested uh, for, it, for different purposes in different data pipelines. And then the ingested data will get processed according to our use case. And uh, for most of the use cases, companies are using supervised algorithms so that we need data labeling, etc. So data labeling and other the data pre-processing, data cleaning and everything will happen in this data processing stage. And then it will get stored in the refined data storage from where the data is taken for different data applications. So this is a flow of the data pipeline that is shown in this picture. Then we have something called F, M and S, V1, V2, etc. that are shown above and below the arrows that connects two different nodes in this uh, data pipeline model. They are nothing but F indicates fall detection, M indicates mitigation, S indicates sending alarms. So in order to have a um, Autom in order to implement this automated data pipeline recovery, we need to find out the faults at each stage of the data pipeline. And simply detecting the fault will not, suf will not be sufficient for uh, this automated data pipeline recovery. For that, we need the mitigation strategies as well, which is marked as M in a small red box. And as a default mitigation strategy, companies are adopting the sending alarms as a uh, fix. For, the, for most of their faults. So we have something called yes in all the stages. Moreover, this um, mitigation strategies might not completely fix the error or fault that is detected. So we would need um, something called sending alarms, which we, by which we send notification to the data pipeline owner or data uh, flow guardian, so that uh, that particular person or that particular group will take care of that uh, fault that is occurred in the data pipeline. And V1 and V2 are nothing but the data validation. So when we fetch the data from this raw data storage, uh, we ingest it directly to the to our um, to the data pipeline for the corresponding use case. So in that case, we need to validate the raw data before we um, do this other data pre-processing, uh, data cleaning, etc. 
So that is a uh, first phase of data validation and V2 is nothing but second phase of data validation that happens before we store the data in a refined data storage. So I think I explained all the components in this data pipeline. And the um, easiest method for us to was for us was to identify the typical faults and the mitigation strategies and uh, implement this rule based um, fall detection, sorry, role based automated uh, data pipeline recovery. Uh, so we identified a bunch of typical falls using a case study uh, at two different companies and one company was interconnected with a uh, with a third company uh, which was not there in this uh, software center. So in, actually we had three companies but then um, we as um, two of them are closely related. We have considered it as a single use case. So we have uh, four use cases from two different case companies. Uh, we have marked case, case companies as A and B and the data pipelines at case company A is marked here as A1, A2 and A3 and the data pipeline at uh, case company B is marked as B1. So here you can see that uh, the falls are being classified according to the stage where it is developed. And uh, I have also mapped in what all use cases that particular falls has been detected and the corresponding mitigation strategy. And uh, as I told you in the, the previous slide, sending alarms is a default mitigation strategy. And in order to uh, illustrate that, I have just marked if they were using the sending alarms as a mitigation strategy. So uh, if you look at the faults, uh, I will not be explaining in detail each and every fault uh, because uh, because of two reasons. The first thing is that I might not be able to finish it in um, 30 minutes if I go under details of each and every fault that is that is that I'm going to explain. Another reason is that um, I think it's pretty clear or obvious from the names of this fault itself. So in the first stage, uh, which is data generation, the typical faults are data source failure and inactive data source. So data source failure is uh, encountered by all the data pipelines that we studied and the corresponding mitigation strategy that was adopted by um, at least one of the companies. It was to set a proxy which never fails and then uh, in Except for A1, all of them were used, were sending alarms to this data flow guardian. And the second fault in this stage is inactive data source. Uh, that is also present in A1, A2, and B1. And the mitigation strategy is to send notification to restart the source. So the data pipeline or owner or the person or the team that is responsible for data pipeline recovery will take care of this fault. And then uh, comes the second stage of data collection where authentication failure uh, is one of the fault which can be easily mitigated using functional user credentials and then uh, data sending job failure as a second fault uh, and that for that the mitigation strategy is to send notification about the failure and the third one is unexpected data. So we cannot actually anticipate the same sort of data all the time because data is evolving in nature. So there can sometimes there can be unexpected data as well, and there can be many more reasons for this unexpected data. So in that case, um, a, an email is sent to the flow guardian. And then comes the third stage called data ingestion, where we have faults like incompatible ingestion methods, data extraction faults and change in data formats. So if it is incompatible ingestion methods, um, we'll use, uh, I mean, uh, we'll log the error and define dedicated ingestion modules for that one. So as I told before, the data is evolving in nature. So sometimes, I mean, we um, sometimes this predefined ingestion methods will not be able to handle the uh, evolved or changed data or updated data. So in that case, uh, the ingestion methods will fail. So uh, we have to log this error and define dedicated ingestion modules, which uh, cannot be considered as an immediate mitigation or immediate fix. Um, in that case, it might require some time to get it fixed. 
and then data extraction falls as another one uh, that are, that are typically found in this um, data ingestion stage in this case uh, the mitigation strategy is to convert to an acceptable format formalize the data and define data extraction method for all data formats and the third one is change in data formats so for that we use this versioning mechanism as a mitigation strategy and uh, the fourth stage is data storage uh, they can be insufficient storage and the main reason for this is that different use cases are using this uh, different data pipelines. So at least the first few stages of these data pipelines will be one and the same. So what happens is that different uh, teams will be using uh, different parts of the storage and they'll be uh, storing the same data again and again. So uh, which will lead to this insufficient storage problem. So alarm to the developer and then to the support team as the Im immediate mitigation strategy that can be adopted uh, whenever this kind of fault is detected and data duplication as another fault where we use this um, um, HDFS where data duplication is handled or managed and um, managed. So and then the third one is infrastructure failure for that will send alarms to the IT support. And then comes the data processing stage where transformation falls um, is the first type typical fault that is that is um, observed in this data processing stage. So the mitigation strategy adopted here is to define lossless approaches so that the data will be the same. But um, you know this mitigation strategy is not that efficient because if we are using any type of compression methods, then of course it is going to be lossy uh, approach. Uh, yes, but there are some uh, lossless approaches that can be used for this transformation. And then comes unclear definitions and wrong interpretations. For that, we don't have any other um, any other mitigation strategies, so we have to contact SMEs in this case. And then comes the final stage called data sync, where human errors, scheme errors, and dirty data are the uh, problems. So for human errors, data validation is what we usually implement as a mitigation strategy. That is why in the uh, conceptual data pipeline model itself, you would have seen V1 and V2 as two different phases of data validation. And sch for schema errors, we define a common schema and common language uh, and we write different parsers to mitigate this uh, schema errors. And then uh, for dirty data, we use statistical methods, data imputation techniques, etc., as mitigation strategies. Uh, but uh, in dirty data itself, uh, there are different types of problems that occur in this dirty data fault itself, and each one of it requires require different mitigation strategy, and it might uh, take some time to implement that. Um, but the easiest thing that we can do is to identify some typical um, data problems and then define this data imputation techniques and um, data imputation techniques for in order to mitigate these kind of problems. So uh, these are the typical faults and mitigation strategies that we have already identified. And uh, let's see how we do uh, automated data pipeline recovery using these fault detection and mitigation strategies. So in order to do this or in order to implement this automated data pipeline recovery in our data pipelines, we use two components um, that are connector level components in the data pipeline and they are nothing but fault detection and mitigation. So we are incorporating new components in all links. Um, I mean, so for us incorporating these new components in all links was certainly not achievable within a short period due to practical difficulties. Therefore, we chose a small slice of our data pipeline A3, which is as shown here, and we implemented our fault detection mitigation strategy in that uh, small link, and we observed the results. So um, we implemented this in case company A and in um, data pipeline A3. So data pipeline A3 is as shown in this figure. This data pipeline A3 was collecting the data uh, from teams as well as from the client locations. So from teams, they were collecting continuous integration data and from the uh, monitoring devices that are uh, deployed in this uh, fields or the client location, they were collecting this continuous deployment data. And all these data were ingested into a common data repository. 
So sometimes there can be encrypted links while collecting the CI and CD data. So all these encrypted links will go to the data archiver module and that particular data archiver module will send it to a third party service for decoding. And once the data is decrypted, it will be sent back to the data archiver, which we, uh, and this decrypted data is then stored in the central data repository from where different data applications can access the data from that central uh, data repository. So the problem here is that due to uh, inadequate bandwidth or insufficient resources or due to insufficient resources, these third party services sometimes will not send back these um, decoded data or decrypted data to the, to the data archiver. And consequently, what happens is that the central data repository will be missing all those decrypted links from the third party services. As a result, these data applications that are that fetch the data from central data repository will get affected. So this was a problem that was faced at, uh, faced by company A. Uh, so as you can see that uh, many of these data applications were dependent on this central data repository for its working. So we really have had to do something to fix this issue so that the data applications will work better. So this is how we implemented our fault detection. Each data link is associated with a unique dump ID. Um, and so we scan this HPACE table when a new link is obtained uh, from data ingestion node. And this encrypted link is sent to a third party if decrypted link is not available in the HPACE table. And then the third party services at zone C sent the decrypted link back to zone B. And it was written back to the HPACE table by setting the response code as 200 and service failure flag as no. Uh, and now status not equal to 200 represents failed data links. So uh, we implemented this kind of fault detection and from this uh, it is clear that the status that is not equal to 200 represents the failed data links. So now let's see what kind of mitigation strategy that we have adopted. So we'll check for all data links stored in HBs before 24 hours with response code 200 and then fetch the dump and small, uh, form small, small batches and we send them to the third parties using Kafka message service for decryption. And then we make a Kafka message that contains these dump IDs back to third parties for reprocessing. So if when we do this mitigation strategy at some point we will get this decrypted data back um, back and then it will be stored in the central data repository so that data applications that are fetching the data from the central data repository will be will not be affected that much so these are the results that we obtained after implementing this automated data pipeline recovery we observed that number of failed dump IDs were like 32,453 over 30 days and these dumps were skipped. That is, that is, they were not at all taken for further processing. And as a result, quality of the reports that were generated uh, from this data was poor and failed dumps are to make automatically resend as small batches along with new dumps to the third parties for decryption. That was a, um, that was a mitigation strategy that we adopted and then uh, we were able to solve that issue for certain ex for a certain extent. Now the limitation here is that we cannot anticipate all faults at various stages of the data pipeline, and therefore it is very very hard to create an exhaustive list of all the faults and the corresponding mitigation strategies. And uh, you might have already observed that most of the mitigation strategies nothing but sending alarms to these people or sending notifications to these people uh, to the people who are concerned with this or people who are responsible for this uh, data pipeline um, recovery. So uh, in order to overcome this limitation, we have something called AI powered fault tolerance, where in the first stage, so this is completely depend, I mean, uh, yeah, this is completely AI powered fault tolerance, where uh, we implement this uh, model in four stages. So the first one will be an anomaly detection um, in which anomalies will be detected using an AI model and uh, with the help of um, yeah, that I will be explaining in the next slide. So the first thing is first phase is anomaly detection. Second phase is fault identification. Third one is mitigation strategy recommendation. The fourth one, one is automated mitigation. So let's see how we are planning to implement this. In the first stage of anomaly detection, 
uh, anomalies in data will be detected and with the help of data analyst will check if the anomaly is a fault and if it is a fault it will be logged by the data scientist and um, he basically creates a, a data set uh, and then uh, the second stage is fault identification where the data set from the previous uh, phase will be used for training the fault detection model and uh, test in this phase the fault will be identified automatically but the mitigation strategy will be identified by the data scientist and he has to log that in order to form a or in order to update the existing data set so data scientist then updates the data set over the fault and the corresponding mitigation strategy will, which will be used for training the model in the next phase which is um, which is a model that will be able to uh, recommend mitigation strategies automatically. So this updated data sets will be data set will be used for training the model, the recommendation model in this phase and thus the model will recommend mitigation strategy when the same fault appears again. However, the mitigation should be implemented by the data scientist at this particular phase. And in the automated mitigation phase, as the name indicates, uh, this is a final phase and as the name indicates the system by itself implements a mitigation without the help of data scientist. So this is a model that we are planning to implement, but this is an ongoing study, so I don't have results to show um, in this one. So moving to our conclusion, I have already presented the mod concept of modeling a fault tolerant data pipeline or a robust data pipeline which can automatically detect common faults and take action to reduce the impact. And most of the faults identified are typical and deployed to the industrial data pipelines. And the classification of faults according to the stages, uh, uh, we hope that it helps companies to identify the faults that occur in their data pipelines. And finally, mitigation strategies we identified through our study will help um, uh, to reduce the impact of the faults in the data pipeline. And uh, this is our future work, like uh, we have to identify the data set that can be used to implement the um, model, that four stage model that I have shown, that AI powered fault tolerance model. Uh, we need to identify the data set that can be used to implement the, that model. And then we have to implement that four stages of AI powered fault tolerance model and then validate the model with multiple companies. So this is a plans um, and these are the references that I have already used to make this presentation. Uh, so if anyone of you are interested in any of these papers, please let me know so that I can uh, send this to you. And now it's time for questions. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Aishwarya. You left us a um, beautiful one and a half minutes 